Braun bars women from entering sports arenas once again. On March 28th, during an uh, Iran versus Lebanon soccer match, security guards of the Imam Reza Stadium in Mashhad, Iran, denied women access to the stadium. A tweet by Radio Farda, the Iranian arm of Radio Free Europe, showed hundreds of women, some holding their tickets in hand, protesting for access to the stadium. Iran Student News Agency reported that more than 2,000 Iranian women were denied access. The stadium's administrators have not commented on this issue yet. Women have been barred from attending soccer matches since the Islamic Revolution in 1979. Global soccer organizations have put pressure on Iran to change their practices. Back in January, in an effort to secure Iran's entry into the 2022 Qatar World Cup, Iran allowed 2,000 women to watch a game at the Azadi Stadium. However, Iran quickly backtracked on its efforts, especially in Mashhad. Iran International reported that Mashhad is home to numerous extremely conservative Muslim clerics who are influential in barring women from quote-unquote male-dominated spaces. Armin, what is your analysis on this On this news? This was causing a huge uproar in the uh, Iranian social medias. Yeah, this has uh, this has become a major, major beyond um, football. Okay, like the politics and the backlash to this has gotten to the highest part of the regimes. Okay, and okay, so for, just to give you some context, um, Iran, like there's a fight between the Islamic uh, the Republic, the Iran's government, and FIFA. Because FIFA has been telling Iran that if you don't allow women into, um, you know, these stadiums, like there's going to be consequences. And a lot of hum women's rights and feminists and human rights um, political activists have been putting a lot of pressure on FIFA that why do you keep, like, why do you not challenge the Islamic Republic when, you know, when they're not abiding by your own, by your standards? Like, you guys are being hypocrite. So... So FIFA has been demanding that from uh, Iran. And recently, it seemed like Iran was like, because like, you know, the main religion in Iran is not Islam, okay? The main religion in Iran is soccer, okay? It's football. True. Yeah, so if like, if Iran is not, <laughs> this would be a major big deal for Iranians, right? If like, um, if like then if Iran cannot participate in I don't know, I don't know much about sports, right? So, but I just know that this will have major consequences, right? So, what has happened is seemed like is it seemed like Iran Iran's Iran's government was starting like ease up to allowing women in stadiums, and this was like a sport that a lot of women were looking forward to going into, right? And women in Iran have been very, very because this is not just about women being able to go watch sports in sp stadium. Okay, like a lot of women activists are pushing for this because this is the battle, the battle for women rights, right? Like it's a symbol for everything for women being able to be equal to men, right? There's so many everybody who's coming out and saying like, oh, our sisters should be able to imagine to to enjoy sports as well. Like the government is going after them. They're losing their jobs. They're even like. Like, for example, there was one of soccer players that, like, I wish, like, you know, our female fans could also come watch us. And in the on TV, when they were playing his voice, like, talking about the sport, that part where he said that got cut, right? And a lot of people were outraged that that part was cut. Like, a lot of soccer players, uh, team members were singing songs saying, like, men and women are equal. Um, and, you know, everybody should be able to enjoy sports, including women. And, you know, like, there's songs about this. Like, this is a huge thing, okay? And this, like, it used, I think a lot of people are focusing on women being able to be allowed in stadiums because it's an easier... It used to be, just a couple of years ago, it was a bad hijab, right? Hijab being mandatory or not, okay? But that is such a red line for the Islamic Republic of Iran because it was one of the foundational values of the revolution for uh, more than 40 years ago, right? So I think... This has become a more PC or acceptable, like it's harder for the Islamic Republic of Iran to make a case for why 
this is such a red line for us, right? Because it's not one of their foundational principles, right? So that's why a lot of women rights activists, activism has centered around this right now in Iran, right? So a couple of other points, which is interesting, is that there's now these, I, I don't know if you mentioned it because I was trying to write the points that I need to bring up when you were talking. Um, did you mention that the, these women were pepper sprayed when they were showed up? No. Okay. So by the way, you said they didn't comment yet, but no, they have commented now. They, they commented at the a time lot of writing. It. They hadn't at the time of writing. Statement. Yeah. I know. I know. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, okay. So what happened was and originally a lot of, so, um, a lot of women were at the door with their tickets saying that we bought tickets. Right. But then, um, they weren't allowed in, even though they were told that women are now allowed into this into the sport, right? So they 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 barred all the women, and they were like, people were the women are like, okay, then if women were not allowed, then why do we have tickets? Why did you sell tickets to women? We paid for this, now we want to be allowed in, but they didn't allow them in. So a lot of people were outraged, like you got their money, you sold tickets to women and now they're not allowed in and they were so angry like they were banging at the doors they were shouting they wanted to be allowed in and eventually the pepper sprayed them and the footage of the pepper spray was outrageous right like this has become so it was so disgusting i don't know if i can show it here that even a lot of mullahs came out and they were like uh no 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 this is bad somebody needs to somebody needs to be held responsible for this like women were like crying and they were like you know saying the strongest words against the regime and they were you know they were burning and people were looking at this and these were women that were excited to come like they were so excited to come watch the sport and they were met with pepper spray but they thought they're finally going to be allowed in right and even some government officials were like this is these women were wrong, and now it seems like even some some major hardliners, like you would think, like this would be a fight between anti-regime and re pro-regime people, but it's like people are wondering why some major hardliners are coming out and saying whoever was responsible for this, they need to be like hunted down and held responsible, and they need to be punished. And people are like, who said who 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 sold the tickets, and then who who allowed them to have tickets, who. Um, close the doors to them who's responsible for the mm, pepper spray like every like there's an investigation and everything and there's an internal fight and some people are saying oh this is there's no internal fight and this is just a conspiracy theory to show that they're angry but they're not really angry because this comes from okay so uh, here's a, here's how this gets escalates um, to a massive degree okay this this all of a sudden got the conversation got to who's the next supreme leader <laughs> that's how high up this whole conversation got right because <laughs> because wait what <laughs> yeah yeah that's how how much this escalated okay and okay so this happened in my chat okay and the the father of racy's wife so father-in-law right um yes. i think that's what his, his relationship to racy is um yeah. alam al huda is the main mullah in my chat okay and People tr in Mashhad in Iran, they treat this man like a holy figure, okay? Similar to so how a lot of people treat Khamenei, okay? So a lot of anti-regime people uh, have been focusing on him and because he's so popular and he's seen as such a sacred person, um, are, fo are trying to bring up this event and say it was him, okay? Because he has a video, I don't know if, maybe I will show this video of him on Secular Jihadists, talking about this man ta talking about how the reason why women shouldn't be allowed in stadiums is because they get excited uh, and that's haram he was basically like you can see one of his friday sermons saying like have if you look at men in stadiums um when they're watching sports you can see how excited they are you can see how you know full of passion they become and then he was telling asking people like imagine how the amount of depravity, uh, uh, how much um, the amount of, I don't know, shame that we have to deal with if women were this excited and showing this much passion in the stadium. 
and that would be haram and that would be illegal like imagine being exposed to all that passion and excitement that women were showing right in a stadium and this is ob obviously disgusting and haram and we could have that like imagine the people who are pushing for that imagine how low and how uh, immoral they are for for them to push for something like that for having women excited this excited in public right and that video was circulating to say like okay this video obviously suggests that he is the guy that is responsible for sp spraying this woman but then you know the first of all the stadium the people who are responsible for selling the tickets they were like saying first of all these tickets were fake uh we didn't sell tickets to women um what? none of these yeah they were saying these tickets what? like they're saying there was only nine real tickets that were sold to women by mistake and all these tickets that these women who have are are you know not real okay um so th that's what they're saying and then they were saying like the pepper spray was not our fault uh, it, it, the, the the command came from a higher higher ups okay so they were in like high higher ups that's why some people then went to a letter many years ago from Khamenei from the supreme leader himself and they're like okay this is Khamenei himself must have ordered this again I'm not saying any of these things okay a lot of people are just very loose and easy with connecting dots together uh but I'm just reporting you what people are saying they say they had there was a letter from Khamenei to Ahmadinejad because I don't know if people understand Ahmadinejad was a lot more a lot less pro restrictions than Khamenei okay as 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 weird and as Islamic and as pro restriction as somebody like Ahmadinejad is he was for having women in stadiums okay and Khamenei wrote a letter there's a there's a letter that has been leaked of Khamenei writing to Ahmadinejad many years ago when he was president saying what the hell man like you know why are you going against the teachings of Marja or the what Mar a lot of Mar like do you not notice that a lot of Marjas uh, like Islamic role models, Shia Islamic role models are saying that women shouldn't be in stadiums and you as a president shouldn't be going against the teachings of Merja, right? So there was a warning by Khamenei to, so people are saying this is the position of Khamenei. So obviously if this is the position of Khamenei, this would not be tolerated in Iran, okay? So in, in Iran, they like, but they also don't want to be kicked out of FIFA, okay? Or whatever, I don't know how the sports works there, but I don't know if you could get kicked out of it. I don't know how any of that work, but they don't want that consequences because how important soccer is for Iranians, right? So they're trying to like, you know, they use the pandemic a lot for, for not having any audience for the past three years, just so, so FIFA couldn't, couldn't like, bother them but now that the pandemic is being over they're like oh my god what do we do we don't want to let women in because obviously this is Khamenei's position right and Alam al Huzar's position as well but we also don't want the consequences of being kicked out of FIFA is very important as well but anyways the reason why I'm talking about the next supreme leader is because we now finally are talking about another major contender this has brought the discussion of Alam al Huda from Mashhad as as a potential because overall we have always been talking about um, only two people that could be potential, the potential next supreme leaders, which is Raisi um, or Mushtaba Khamenei, which is the son of the current supreme leader. But now, all of a sudden, this has brought more attention to how popular, how big of a religious figure Amal Huda is. Like, we have footage now being shown to us of how much people, tr how they treat him, how they, uh, uh, you know, venerate him, how high they look up to him, and how how big of a following he has. And people are saying like maybe like some of the behind the scene this is like a ideological battle between different radical different uh, you know hardliners to see who has more of a um mm. pull over different people um you know compare you know i mean if you look at alam hodam as from a, a religious perspective he's be above both raisi and mushtaba khamenei so you know well, it, and it, khamenei it, it, himself and Khamenei himself, exactly. <laughs> Ali Khamenei himself, right? Is he actually so, Mushtahed? Um, I don't know. I think he should be. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, but he must be. I think he must be. I don't know. Just somebody in the live chat could confirm. I mean, like, they made uh, Mushtabu Khamenei a Mushtahed like this just because he was the son of Khamenei. So I don't...
Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Even though it's supposed to be a very, very unique yeah. and hard thing. Like you're, if you're a mujtahid, you're somebody who's like I deciding the rules of Islam for everybody, right? Like so. Okay, so that it's very. Did they pull very... strings and make Ali Hamane a mujtahid? Um, I don't know. Did you, you're asking very hard questions right now. So Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I don't know how that worked out, but that's those are very good questions. You're you're asking expert level questions, right? But oh, this That's is this right. is uh, this this is Alamul Huda, by the way. If you want to see what he looks like, this is the guy. Um, he is a significant figure right now. Okay. I love and, his statement that women being excited is haram. I don't think. It, okay, so I like, think what, what does that, that mean? <laughs> I think the statement is that is not that woman just being excited is haram. I think like women being we men being able to witness in public women being so excited and so yeah, like, passionate. <laughs> yeah, like being exposed to that that I think that's what they f consider as something degenerate, something extremely degenerate. Yeah. That's what they have an issue with. Yeah. Anyways. I, but yeah, in, in isolation, the statement like women being excited is haram. You're like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, there were some really good comments in the live chat. So Ibn Gayyam is saying there was a documentary some years ago where when the stadium ban for women was in place, the documentary showed women even dressing up as men and sneaking into the stadium. Yes, yes this is something yes. that's very famous. Um and also verifying that the passion for soccer in Iran was huge. I remember yeah. a few years ago when there was an incident where there was a female referee, and every time the female referee would come onto the field, the Iranian authorities would clip that out of the live broadcast, and that caused outrage because it was interfering with people's ability to watch the game and see what was happening with the game. And so Armin was saying that if people wanted to cause the downfall of the Iranian regime, they would only allow female referees so that all the footage would be cut. And then like the Iranian population out of everything, they would not stand for that and the regime would yeah. fall. So I think this is yeah. an amazing I mean, this is how this is a joke, though. But like, uh, yeah. So basically, um, because Iranian TV cannot show uh, female referees because they wear shorts and stuff. So I was thinking, like, coming up with a plan um, to just make all the referees for all sports female. So all the scenes would have to be cut, and then Iranian people really need to watch their soccer. So if Ira if Iranian national TV keeps cutting all the scenes because the females are uh, the referees are female, um, then the Iranian people would be like, okay, that's enough. We need to topple this government because we need our football or soccer, as you say it. Um, so yeah, that, I think that would work. Just just get, because yeah, just that's my plan, Musad. You you know just push for this. So, yeah, this will work. This is this is definitely gonna work. Yeah. I have the answers. Um, cool. I think we should go on to the... Uh, oh, yeah. Rami is saying our society will collapse if women get excited in public. Oh, here's a... Because we want to value our Twitch commentators, let's also do a Twitch comment. Uh, Living Life 27 is asking, do the leaders in Islamic countries like Iran, Saudi Arabia, etc. really believe in Islam or are they just using it to control the population? Like many people in the Saudi royal family live Western lifestyles. Okay, but in the Saudi family is different from the, the House of Saud and House of Wahhab are two different things, right? Um, so, but in Iran, they're both the same thing, <laughs> right? So, um, I okay, so I don't think you can make a general claim, okay, about the leaders okay when we say islamic leaders in iran you're talking about you know hundreds and hundreds of people <laughs> okay you're not talking about just one guy right um and i don't think you could make a general claim about how much all of them believe what they're saying or not okay and also i think it's not even with one individual um you can make a general claim okay so it depends on the Islamic leader, and I think they all different are different from each other, and the, and the degree of sincerity is also different. But even with one individual, you might have an individual that is sincerely believes some major parts of Islam, 
but then some rulings that they're coming up with right now, they might think that's more political than religiously sound, you know? So they might even, they might believe in Allah, Muhammad, Ali, Imam Zaman, all of that, Hussein, Zahra, all of that. They believe in all of that and they matter to them. But you might think like, okay, this whole sports stadium thing, we're using that as leverage against these other hardliners here, okay? So, you know, they might not think that there's any religious grounds for this, for example, but that doesn't mean that they don't believe in Islam as a whole, okay? So you can make a general statement. It really depends. Um, we just got a super chat. Yay, amazing. We just got a super chat from Misha saying, who gave us five Australian dollars. Thank you so much, Misha. Amazing. Saying, just wanted to say that I just joined Patreon and this is the best way to spend my Sunday afternoon. Oh, Aww, thank you, guys. That's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for yes, supporting yeah. us on Patreon, which is a yeah, good guys. reminder to everyone that if yeah. you enjoy our content or what Atheist Republic does in general, the way that we build atheist community, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Link is in the description below. Um, we would not be able to do what we do if it was not for our patron supporters. And if you join us as a supporter there, you get uncensored access to all of our sexy blasphemous art. I just released a new art on there today, which is one of my favorite that we've had in a while. So go check it out. And you also get priority treatment during our live Q and A's that happen every Thursday. So please consider supporting us and you can get all of this for as little as $1 a month. So yeah, thank you, thank again, you guys. Chef. Ibn Qayyam said, well said, Armin, agreed. This is very great. Ibn Qayyam is a, a critic of mine, of, so it's, he agrees with me here, so that's very uh, interesting. Uh, you know? So thank you. So, uh, for, it's good to get confirmation from Ibn Qayyam when somebody... I, by the way, I really appreciate Ibn Qayyam's disagreements with me. So, um, you know, so it's good to have you here. Anyways, can... A well-considered criticism. Especially because he comes off with, like, a background that he knows certain things so it's good to have that balance you know check on your um some of the things that i'm saying here you know somebody coming out like actually hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.